welcome to this Easter week edition of Martha Mundy. I'm Laura McFarland. This is Cross My Heart Ministry. I want to thank you for stopping by. Today I want to share a recipe that I have used in my family for many years. It's really a shape, a way of cutting up a cake to make something special for Easter. We're going to make a bunny cake. I'm going to use a recipe for the base that I've used in my family for years. It's called a hasty cake. I'm not even sure where I got it. I'll share that recipe in a few minutes. If you have a favorite family cake recipe, if you've got a cake mix, any cake will do. The thing I wanna share with you today is how to take two round cake pans and make Easter special. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take two round cake pans. We're gonna leave one round. The other one we're gonna cut. I hope you can see that. We're gonna cut it to make two bunny ears. And then when we finish, we're gonna assemble our pieces like this so that our bunny will have his head, his two ears, and his little bow tie. So we're gonna mix up the cake first. I'm gonna get it baking. I'll pause the video while my cake bakes, and then I'll come back and share a recipe for buttercream icing. We'll go ahead and ice that. I'll share some ideas for how you can decorate it. It's Easter. We are all celebrating Easter in a different way this year. We're probably not going to be, most assuredly, going off to church. We may not be wearing our Easter dresses or putting our little girls in hair bows and patent leather shoes. But we moms and we grandmas can still make Easter special for our families. And just making a little cake shaped like a bunny, maybe hiding some plastic eggs if you've got some of those around your house and having an Easter egg hunt inside, we can endeavor to be creative and our Lord can give us some creativity because what we're celebrating for Easter is still true. Our Lord reigns, the tomb is empty, and He is risen indeed. So whether it's my Easter bunny cake or something else, I hope you'll come up with a way to make Easter special. But now I wanna share with you my little cake recipe. It's called a hasty cake. And the nice thing about this cake recipe is it just makes a single cake. So there have been times that I wanted to do just a quick little cake for my family. In our family, we often celebrated half birthdays because when children are little, it just seems like a long time to wait for 12 months to go by to celebrate your birthday. So when I remembered, some years we would celebrate a half birthday. And of all of our kids, Luke was the one that would always seem to remind me that a half birthday was coming up. So if we remember the half birthday, I might make this hasty cake or I might make just a big chocolate chip cookie cake and decorate it some way. But this little hasty cake makes a single cake. Usually I would put it in an eight inch square pan. Today I'm going to double it. So when I share the recipe with you, uh, keep in mind, I'll, I'll put a link down below where you can download the recipe. It's gonna be for a single cake, but today I'm going to be doubling it. So I know that's a little confusing, just stick with me here. So first of all, my recipe calls for one third cup of butter or margarine softened. So I've already got two thirds a cup of butter softened here. So there's one third times two. I softened it in the microwave a little bit ahead of time. So it's all ready to go. And you know, anytime a recipe calls for a lot of butter, you know it's going to be delicious. It just adds that delicious flavor. Uh, you can of course substitute margarine if you want, but I wouldn't. Why cook with margarine? Why bake with margarine when you can bake with butter, right? This is a celebration. We're not gonna count the calories. We start off by creaming the butter and then adding in the sugar. I'm gonna, I've got my KitchenAid all cooked up and ready to go here. So I'm gonna put that on here and add the ingredients. Let me attach my dough hook uh, for the mixing. So that's on there. And now we're going to add the sugar so that it can get, be mi mixing in well. So I've got my sugar here ready to go. Again, this recipe calls for one cup of sugar, but because we are doubling the recipe, I'm gonna do one cup for one layer, and then I'm gonna add a second cup for the second layer. So there are my two cups of sugar, and the recipe calls for me just to beat that together, get that kind of mixing on low. We're gonna beat that kind of well. There it goes. Let me break my Part of my delicious butter is stuck up on the side, so I'm gonna rake that off of there. 
put this down. It says to beat a well, so I'm gonna put that shield on, get it locked in, and let that really have at it and beat that together well. It says to add the egg again. It calls for one egg. I am going to add two. When I crack an egg, ladies, I learned my lesson a long time ago. You don't often get a bad egg. More than likely, my danger is that I'll get a little bit of a shell in there. And it's a lot easier to dig a shell out of a little coffee cup or a little small bowl than it is to dig it out of your bag. So I have learned to break my eggs into a separate container. So there's the egg. Got my cute little Easter dish top here. My friend Carly gave that to me last year. So I love cooking and using my seasonal towels. So it looks like that's getting mixed up really, really well. I'm gonna go ahead and stop that while I mix together my dry ingredients. So it tells for us to combine all the dry ingredients. We're gonna add that to the cream mixture alternately with the milk. So let's get on to the dry ingredients. The first one is, it calls for one and three-fourths cup of flour. So one and three-fourths cup times two is three and a half cups. You don't have to do the math, I'll just tell you. So three and a half cups of flour is what I'm looking for. So count those out with me here. There's one and two and there's three. And then I've got the half a cup already out ready to go as well. So there is three and a half cups of all purpose flour. We're gonna add a tablespoon of baking powder. So I've got my tablespoon ready. So there's one tablespoon. I love it when they have the little divider there on the top so it makes that easy to measure. So there's one tablespoon. We're doubling the recipe. So I'm going to add the second tablespoon of the baking powder. And then it calls for one fourth a teaspoon of salt, doubling that to a half a teaspoon. So it's always a little nerve wracking. I probably should measure my salt over another container because it's hard to dig, as hard as it is to dig an eggshell out of batter, it's impossible to dig too much salt out. So there's my half a teaspoon of salt. Um, and there's all my dry ingredients. I have my flour, baking powder, and salt. So those are it for the dry ingredients. I'm just gonna use my spatula, mix those together very well to get the baking powder and salt mixed throughout my flour mixture. And then the next ingredient is 2 thirds cup of milk. So again, we're going to need to um, double that. So two thirds and two thirds is going to be one and a third cups of milk. We're gonna add that alternately. So let me go ahead and measure out a third, one and a third cups of milk. So that is all ready to go. So uh, we're gonna add now, the recipe calls for um, combining the dry ingredients, adding it alternately with the milk, beginning and ending with the flour mixture. That's what I was looking for. So as we do this, I'm gonna let this get started just a little bit. And I'm gonna just start mixing in a little bit of my flour. And then let that get going. Add a little bit of the milk, okay? Then I'm gonna add more of the flour. Really, I should use the shield because it gives me that little pour spout there to make that happen, to keep me from making the mess that I could possibly make. So we're gonna let the flour go in here. Okay, this is gonna bake, let me go to preheat the oven. It's gonna bake at 350 for 25 minutes. So let me go ahead, get that started. Um, I bake it, if, if you have a convection oven, I love to bake on convection because the, the heat circulates all throughout. And so, especially when we're baking things, it just gives a nice, complete, uh, finished product. So my oven automatically makes that 25 degree allowance. If you have convection, you bake at 25 degrees lower temperature. So 350 if just a regular oven, 325 if you're doing convection. So there's that. Let me put in a little more milk. Put in a little more flour. We're doing the alternate thing just as they ask us. Um, it just seems to go together so quickly because you have such a few number, few number of ingredients to make this little hasty cake. And then because it only takes 25 minutes to bake, 
um, it just comes together nice and quickly. So this was something that if I decided at the last minute when all my children were home that I wanted to do something special and have some dessert after dinner, it just comes together quickly because it's, um, it, it's just such a few number of ingredients and it bakes so quickly. The other nice thing is if it's just the two of you or you don't want to have dessert hanging around all week and be tempted to eat it, doing just an eight inch square means that you eat it, you've had dessert, and then it's out of the house. So this is looking very good, very nice. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off, take away my shield, and then the last thing we're gonna do is mix in that teaspoon of vanilla. So here's my beautiful white cake. Um, it just looks very moist and very delicious. I'm going to mix in one teaspoon of vanilla, actually two, spoons, two teaspoons of vanilla, because we are doubling the recipe to make two pans. So there we go. Let me go ahead. And I like to unplug my mixer before I, that was something I learned in my home ec class from my teacher years ago, and it's just always stuck with me. Though if you're gonna start messing with beaters and doing things, it's just always a good idea to go ahead and unplug the mixer. Now some women will um, want to just take this thing and throw it in the sink. I can't stand to waste any of the dough, so I always break that off. If I have children at home, they're always willing to lick that beater for me, but I like to get as much of it off as I can. I'm gonna remove my little beater bowl there, my little beater, and get this off so that I can go ahead, grab a spoon, and I am going to mix together all of this dough, get all of that vanilla worked all the way through. It's just gonna add a little more flavor for us. We go, it's a nice sort of a thick dough. It's not real runny. I think that sort of distinguishes a homemade cake from one that you might buy in a, in a box mix. Um, but look at that delicious goodness. Here we go. There's my cake batter. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this into my round pans and get this all ready to bake. It'll only take about 25 minutes, but then I'm going to let it cool. I'm going to cut my cake into the little shapes that I shared with you first. It's also helpful to go ahead and actually freeze those slightly because of the crumbs. And if the, if the cake is frozen, it helps to keep it from getting all crummy in your icing and it helps to sort of let it hold up when you start to ice it. So that was another little trick I learned when I took a cake decorating class for my 4-H project years and years ago in West Virginia. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get a, a um, spatula, break the rest of this dough out, get it all in my cake pans, wait for this to preheat, I'll go ahead and get it baked, and then I'll come back and let you see what it looks like when I cut it. We'll freeze it slightly, and I'll share my recipe for buttercream icing from the good old cookbook that I've had for years. Uh, this was actually, I think, a wedding gift. So this Betty Parker cookbook has been in our family for 35 years, and it's got some great classics that always works. So I'll share that recipe for buttercream icing. I hope you'll stay tuned and come back all the way to the end as we finish up our Easter bunny cake. Well, friends, I'm back. The cake is out of the oven. I've taken the, the cake out of the pans. I've allowed them to cool. And I did the cutting, so you can sort of see. I have my round cake. I have the two little bunny ears where I cut out the ears to make the little bow tie. You can see my little bow tie here. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this. I've covered a large cutting board with some freezer paper here just to keep it nice and smooth. I'm gonna lift up my one single round cake here, put it on top of the little bow tie. And then I've got my two little bunny ears. We'll put them here. I'll put the other one on this side. And there we go. I'm gonna scoosh him down just a little to make a little more room for my ears. We'll put those here. And so there you go. I'm getting a little creative with my decorations and I'll share more about that when I begin to do icing, do, do the icing. So I'm, what I'm gonna do now is put the cake in the freezer 
to just sort of let it get slightly chilled. It'll make that easier to go ahead and ice it. It won't be quite so crummy. So I'll, I'll go ahead and get it in the freezer now. And then when I come back, we'll make the icing. I'll share my buttercream icing recipe with you. We'll go ahead and get it iced. And then I'll show you a couple of the creative ideas that I've had to come up with for how to decorate my cake. So you can look in your pantry and like me, maybe during this time of crisis, it's just not worth it to go to the store to find the traditional jelly beans or licorice or the things we normally use. So stay tuned all the way to the end to see the finished product of our Easter bunny cake. Well friends, I'm back. My Easter bunny cake has spent about 10 minutes in the freezer so it's nice and firm. We've got him all displayed here on the cutting board and he's ready to be iced. We're gonna whip together this icing very quickly. This is from my faithful Betty Crocker cookbook that has been a fabulous resource for me these many years. I softened the butter already. This vanilla buttercream frosting calls for three cups of powdered sugar, one third cup of margarine or butter softened. Of course I use butter, so this is already softened. I'm gonna go ahead and get my butter in here, ready to pour in the powdered sugar. I did want to mention a couple of things very quickly uh, before I jump in, and that is when I cut the cake, I didn't mention this before, I used a little bit of dental floss to sort of arrange, I got two pieces, I arranged that on the round layer just to try to make sure that I could visually eyeball it and make sure that my ears were gonna be even. The other thing you could do is just sort of cut a paper template and then you would be exactly sure that both were gonna be correct. There have been years when I just winged it and cut it and made it work and that's okay too if you decide to do that. I recommend a sharp serrated knife. So that's what I used. I got my bunny ears fairly symmetrical, I think. They're, they're, there they are and all ready to go. So now back to our icing. So I'm gonna scrape off all of my butter here to make sure I get it all in there. So there's the, the butter. Uh, so there's the butter and then the three cups of powdered sugar. So I use real butter, not margarine. I've already measured out the powdered sugar. I'm gonna dump that in here. So three cups of powdered sugar. We're gonna put that all in here and mix that um, so that it's all together nice. It's gonna be beaten up pretty good in just a moment. Here, so let me plug this back in. Here we go. Okay, because it's nice and soft, it's gonna mix in there with the powdered sugar. Gonna get all that mixed in together nicely. I love having the kitchen egg mixer do all that work for me. For many years, I just did everything with a hand mixer and that works great too. If that's what you got, you just use what you've got. So that's getting all mixed in there. Nice for us. I'm gonna let it go a little while longer. And then I like to stop it and give it a good little whack with the spatula. Let's stop and make sure there's no butter clinging to the sides. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of my milk, just a little at a time. There's two tablespoons here, but I don't like to put it all in at once because you're just not quite sure it's gonna need it. It seems like the consistency just varies each time just a little differently. So we're going to let that get beaten up nice. Let the mixture do all the hard work for me. It's starting to get clumpy, starting to mix together. All the dryness is going away. And I'm gonna do, I think it is gonna take all of that milk. I'm also going to put in the one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. That gives it a nice flavor. I like to use real vanilla, folks, not the imitation stuff. Just not as good. So let me go ahead and raise this up so that I hit it correctly with the vanilla and don't have any going off on the counter. So one and a half teaspoons of my vanilla. I'm gonna drop that in. Without the vanilla, it doesn't earn its name, vanilla butter free butter frosting. So we're gonna do that. Let the vanilla get nice and mixed in all together. And it just says to beat that until the frosting is smooth and of spreading consistency. I have this little spreader from Pampered Chef that I just
just love. It makes, it's just a great little tool when I start getting ready to spread, but there are a variety of spreaders that, that you may have, or you can always just use a knife or a spatula if that's what you have. I'm a proponent of using what you got. So I think that is just about ready to go. I wanna give it one more little stir with the spatula to get everything on the sides all moved down to make sure that everything is all mixed in together nicely. It's of nice spreading consistency and we are going to be good to go to start spreading here very shortly. Give it one more quick beat and we're ready to go. And I'm gonna call that good so we can get on with our spread. So let's go ahead and unplug the mixer. Let me take this off. Try to shake that out a little bit to get as much frosting off of the beater as I possibly can. We're gonna need all of that delicious goodness to go on our cake. Put that in there, and here we go. There's the buttercream frosting. Who needs to get that out of the can when you can make your own so quick and so easily? So here's my spreader. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with the ears. Um, just give it a little, actually, since they're not all the way put down, you can even, Pick it up if it makes it easier to ice that. All the way around. It may be a little boring for you to be watching me do all this, so what I may do is stop the camera while I do all the icing and then let you come back and pick up later and see the final product. I like to put the cut piece with on the inside, just another little tip because if there are any crumbs that are showing, that way they're kind of on the inside and not on the outside. Now when you make the bunny cake, I will mention that you can do it with chocolate cake, you can do it with strawberry cake, you can do it with confetti cake. I know if you do a cake mix, there's a variety of recipes out there. Because my family is so partial to chocolate, many, many years I used a chocolate recipe and then would choose to use a white icing just because it's so much prettier to do it with the white icing and get to see all of the decorations. So when we get ready to start doing the decorations, I am being a little creative here with the sprinkles that I had on my shelf because again, I did not want to take the risk to go out during the pandemic just to buy the jelly beans. Now my friend Sandy does a very smart thing. I talked to her earlier today and she has made this recipe for her family for many, many years. She buys jelly beans at the end of season and sticks those in the freezer. She said she took some out just recently for her little candy jar and they were perfectly fine. So if I had been smart enough to buy them last year on sale and gotten the great price, I would still have them available uh, now so I wouldn't have to be so creative. But I'm gonna show you here in a few minutes the idea that I have come up with for how I'm going to decorate my cake using what I have. So let me go ahead and continue to ice away and uh, I'll finish this up and then you can uh, come back at the end and we'll come back at the end and we'll let you see what I have done to creatively decorate my bunny cake. Let me put that down, making a little bit of a mess, but that's okay, that's what cake decorating is all about. years ago, I realized I needed to double the recipe. So when it's in my cookbook, it's doubled up, and when I read it out of the original cookbook, it's not doubled. So I'm going to turn off the camera, make another batch, and finish icing my bunny cake, and then we'll decorate it, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back now, and I did go ahead and whip up a second batch of icing, because I realized I did not have adequate icing. The, the original recipe um, was adapted. It gives you instructions below on how to do it for an extra layer, and I neglected to look at that. So I have this recipe in my regular cookbook. I wanted to pull out the Betty Crocker one, but anyway, I have wrapped things up. I have my little bunny all iced. I tried to do
do that quickly so I can get back and finish the video. I may do some more touch up later on my icing, but for right now, again, because I don't have jelly beans, I don't have licorice, I don't have M&Ms, all the normal creative things that I would have, I do not have. So a couple of ideas, if you've got coconut, I sometimes like to take some coconut, put a drop of red food coloring in a jar with some coconut, shake it up, the food coloring will make the coconut kind of a light pink. That's kind of a th fun thing to put inside the bunny's ears. Since I don't have coconut to do that, I'm going to use just a few little pink and white sprinkles. When I went through my baking basket, I had lots of sprinkles and not much of anything else. No jelly beans here, no licorice. So I am going to just put some little sprinkles here on the inside of his ears and hope they will stay put. Because they're pink and white, they will be just a little forgiving to give him just a little pink and a little collar inside his ears. I'm gonna sort of push those down because the icing has dried and it, they just have a tendency to sort of roll off. So we're gonna give him some pink inside his ears with these. Then I cut some pieces of paper, I made a little funnel so that's going to be his eye. So I'm going to put this down for one eye. I'm going to use my blue sprinkles and give my little bunny some blue eyes. And this will help make sure that they all stay corralled in a circle if it works. And I don't drop too many outside of my circle like I just did. So that's my bad. Um, I'll get a toothpick and pull those out later. So I'm going to lift that up and hope, oh, I did too many and they wanted to fall apart. So there's my bad on that. So I'm gonna put the other eye here and I'm going to try to carefully pick up some of these sprinkles. This is what happens when you record live. It doesn't always work the way you would hope. So I am going to try to carefully lift up a few of those little sprinkles. An avocado peeler might have just the right density to make that happen. I scooped up some icing with it, but I'm just going to try to rake some of my sprinkles back out. Oh, what a mess. So anyway, he's going to look like he has kind of a black eye, I guess, but I'm going to try to rake all those into sort of a circle. I will make those repairs off camera for you, but you get kind of my idea. I think it was a good idea it was good on the idea and maybe just poor execution on my part by getting too zealous and pouring in too many sprinkles at once. So let's see if I can do better. I'll drop a few more of those in. I'm gonna tap them down a little bit to try to keep them in place. And yes, I think that eye worked out a little bit better than the first one. I'll try to make these repairs, get some of the sprinkles from his uh, eye that's not quite so circular. Scoot those into a circle and try to repair that. So I'll work on that off camera. And then I have created a little triangle to make his little nose. So I'm gonna make that triangle kind of upside down. Try not to get any of the blue over into his nose. Get those all scooched away, out of the way so that I can do his nose. So we'll give him an upside down nose. I'll put that here, and I think for his nose, I'm going to give him um, a pink nose. So I've got some little pink sprinkles here, so we'll drop those in. Learning from my first mistake, and I'll just sort of, these are bigger, they're little flowers actually, so maybe a little more forgiving than the little other sprinkles. So I'm gonna sort of use my little device and get those all around my pink flower for his little pink nose, lift up my triangle, and that worked out fairly well. I am gonna need to tap down the corners because my little piece of paper made an indentation, but I think that's gonna work out nicely. I will strategically place a few more of my little pink ones there later to cover up the edges. Um, in fact, I'll do that now. Cover up the edges that the indentations made, but I think that's going to be pretty good. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I have some multicolored sprinkles, and I thought this would be fun to give him a very colorful bow tie. Uh, it's got a little green in it, uh, a little pink, and a little blue. So we'll drop some of that on here, 
And again, because they're balls and because the icing is kind of hardened rather, um, the sprinkles aren't wanting to stay on very well, so I'm just gonna pat those down in as I put it on. And if sprinkles fall off the edges, no worries. I will just collect those later and we will make it work. Now, he looks a little bit sad. I think I need to give him sort of a smiling face somehow, some way. And I'll work on an idea for that with maybe some food coloring or something later. But I'm gonna try to get his eyes sort of corralled so that he doesn't look quite so odd or so sad. And uh, we'll make that work. I'm gonna drop a few more of my sprinkles in there. And then the last idea that I had to give him sort of some whiskers, again, no licorice, but I have some spaghetti. So I thought I could maybe color this spaghetti with some food coloring. I'm not sure I have a food coloring that's a great color. So I'm just gonna lay these on here for now to give you the idea of what it could look like for your bunny to have some little whiskers if you had some licorice to make it work. I did find a candy cane left in my drawer, but I decided that the red and white candy cane for my Easter bunny just didn't quite give the look that I was going for. But at any rate, he's not the prettiest thing in the world. It's not my best work, but it gives you an idea, my friends, of how you can celebrate Easter even in these difficult times by making your own Easter bunny cake. Now I got a little bit of my decor from my living room and brought it in for you to see here, silly rabbit, Easter is for Jesus. And so as you make a bunny cake with your children, as you celebrate Easter maybe in a different way than ever before, always be sure and tell your children, it's so fun to get a new Easter outfit. It's fun to buy jelly beans. It's fun to decorate eggs and to hide eggs and to think about the Easter bunny bringing us candy but the Easter Bunny is always just a pretend kind of guy. What Easter is really about is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Easter is our happiest holiday of all because at Easter we celebrate that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, could not stay dead. The tomb would not hold him. He is alive and he is well today. Our Savior lives. We serve a risen Lord. He is risen indeed. Reminds me of a funny story I'll share with you as we wrap up. Last year, our granddaughter, Julia Grace, who was only four at the time, this may be a story from when she was three, she was retelling the Easter story that she had heard at church or from her parents reading to her. And she told me that when she told the story, she said that, that Jesus' friends took him to the tomb and they tried to get him in there and he was too big. And so they had to push him in and roll the stone away to hold him there. That was a three-year-old's interpretation of the tomb could not hold him. Well, friends, Jesus was indeed too big for the tomb. The tomb couldn't hold him, but it's because he has power over sin and death. We serve a risen Savior. And so, so to that, we all say, hallelujah, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Whether you make a bunny cake or something else, I pray you have a blessed, joyful, worshipful Easter, perhaps a different Easter than ever before, but still one where we can celebrate the truth that never changes no matter what crisis we face. Jesus Christ is alive. Thanks for spending this time with me. I'm Laura McFarland. This is the Martha Mundy edition for Easter week of Cross My Heart Ministry. If you're a subscriber, thank you. If you're not, click that big red subscribe button and we'll be happy to send you a notification each week when we pu publish a new video. I'll be back on Friday with a very special devotional for Good Friday. So stay tuned for that. And again, thanks so much for watching. Leave me a thumbs up below and let me know what you have in your house to decorate a bunny cake if you choose to make one. Have a great week, my friends. Stay safe, stay close to one another, stay home, and by all means, stay in the Word. Happy Easter.